Hello folks. Want to look at the uh, color picker in Photoshop this morning um, and uh, go over some basic things. These have uh, very little to do with uh, newer versus older version of uh, Photoshop. It applies to pretty much all, uh, but I wanted to cover uh, some of these uh, basic things. Um, as uh, many of us know, down here at the bottom of the toolbox, you have the uh, foreground and uh, the uh, background areas of color. And I've always said you can just call them uh, area 1 and area 2 or A and B. It's just two different um, categories of color and it's not specifically um, uh, don't read a lot into it being called the foreground or the background. And um, if we can cl click on either one of these, they always default to black and white. We can click uh, and it will bring up the uh, color picker. And the color picker has um, a few things that um, are pretty basic and yet we all uh, can easily gloss over and not realize. The first thing is, of course, that um, we have our uh, various uh, color models. We have uh, here RGB, and uh, this is uh, when we're talking about electronic color. Um, then when we have print, um, we work with the CMYK color model, which is a variation of primary colors that we all learned in the first grade with um, blue, yellow, and red, and then the black is added uh, for shadows. And um, when we want to pick a, a color, wh whichever color model we're using, we can of course um, uh, slide uh, through the uh, rainbow here. We can click on an area and um, what is very important is that you remember that to um, uh, pick color, you uh, have to actually bring this little circle over on top of uh, the color area that you want. And then you need to um, actually click it, and you will see the new color captured here, um, where it, right underneath where it says new. So we can click here and now we see the uh, color sample here. Um, a couple of other important things. <clears throat> First off, for the purists uh, who are working in web pages, uh, there are, I think, 216 or 217 uh, colors that are universal in uh, the web area. And if we want to see just that more limited color palette for web development to make sure that everybody will see it the same way, um, you can come down here in the corner, lower left corner, click only web colors, and then you see a much more limited color palette. Um, I suppose a lot of folks uh, aren't paying attention to that anymore since uh, computers have come a long way. Um, around the world, but um, that is still something to at least be aware of. Then we also have another aspect of, uh, of, of this, whether it's uh, specifically the web color palette or the general uh, color palette. We also have down here um, in the corner, we have the HTML um, uh, description of the color. Remember all colors, like all information, has to uh, be working in the background of web pages in HTML, uh, which is the hypertext language, and so colors are no different than words. There has to be a definition, and so when we pick a color, um, we have that HTML um, hexadecimal code, how's that for a big word, um, definition of that color. And if we were to look in the um, area of, um, of the code, we would see if we had this blue or that blue, um, that it would in fact be defined um, by whatever uh, this designation is. Also, um, another important area, this business between the RGB, which is bright, intense, saturated, electronic color, and CMYK, which is print, 
color. It's um, much uh, duller and darker. Um, a couple of other important tools to know about here in the color picker, and that is that when we have a color or we create a color, let's say this uh, almost fluorescent green, and um, we know that um, we are going to want to convert things to print. Um, we uh, have these little warning symbols here that um, Photoshop um, gives us, warning us that this color will not convert or translate um, the same uh, when it's converted to CMYK, reflected um, color, uh, which is much duller and much less saturated and intense. And um, so we get this little um, triangle here that says, hey, remember, if you pick this color and you're preparing things for print, it's not going to convert very well at all. And um, so we have this little symbol. And right below it, we also have, in fact, the version of it uh, when it is converted to CMYK. And if I were to click on this little symbol at the top, uh, the triangle, um, it will move uh, the color to the CMYK equivalent and it will be down here someplace, duller and darker. So I'll click on this and you see it just moved and this is the CMYK equivalent. Also, um, again, these little symbols that can be a big help to us. Um, here, the little cube, um, and this um, is if we want the uh, closest uh, web safe color. Remember a minute ago we were just talking about the uh, the web safe um, uh, universal color palette. Um, if we want to see the closest version of uh, this green uh, in that web safe palette, we can click uh, the little cube here and again it will take us to the equivalent of, uh, of that color. So um, these are important things that we need to know about when we're working with the color picker. Also, uh, while I'm at it, uh, another quick note that um, for folks that work in um, print color, we also have the, the, the PMS colors, the Pantone Matching System, the Universal um, uh, Library of Color um, that is um, available and is a standard uh, printing. Um, it's uh, the equivalent of, of going to the paint store and picking uh, color paint and they mix up a, a gallon of it for you. Um, these are called the color libraries. And so from the picker, which is an RGB CMYK animal, we can uh, quickly go to spot color. And Photoshop doesn't handle spot color nearly as well as it does RGB and CMYK, but nonetheless um, my point is you can click here where it says color libraries and this will take you to the uh, the Pantone and there are several other color libraries uh, Toya, TrueMatch that some folks around the world use but Pantone is considered the universal uh, language for print color it was around long before um, computers were. So this is where you can um, select the various Pantone um, uh, color libraries and um, and that's what we have right here. And, um, and of course there are thousands of these colors and they all have a, a number designation. And um, we can return to the picker by going over here to the right and clicking on picker and um, it'll take us right back uh, to this spot. So uh, some basics of color and the all-important color picker which now looks and behaves the same in Illustrator as it does in Photoshop and um, pretty much across the board. Um, but the basics, uh, most important that you understand RGB um, electronic color as it exists in our devices, our scanners, our computers, our monitors, our digital cameras, and the old-fashioned uh, primary colors blue, yellow, and red. In print terms, it's CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 
and um, is very, very different than RGB, which um, uh, kind of turns the physics of color on its head from what we all have learned in the first grade. And um, I think um, that'll uh, be of help to you, and um, hope uh, once again this information was useful, and uh, stay tuned to uh, many of the other um, older and hopefully some newer um, uh, videos in the Rick Rice One channel. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.